Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Today, let's talk about phantom power. What is it and why do you need it? If you've ever seen an audio interface or a microphone preamp that has a little button that says 48V on it, you might be wondering what the heck is that thing? What is a V and why do I need 48 of them? Well, it's very simple. The V stands for volts and 48 is how many volts you're getting when you push that button. But before we even go there, why do you need volts? And why is this button on your audio interface or microphone preamp? Well, let's go back one step further and talk about types of microphones. If you have ever worked in a live environment on stage, you might've seen a microphone like this. This is the Shure SM57, or maybe you've seen its big brother, the Shure SM58, which has just a bigger, little screen on it, pop screen on it. Classic live application dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphone means it is a certain style or type of microphone. It's the way the microphone picks up audio. Inside this guy is a little magnet with coils around it. And when you blow air into it or play a guitar into it or smack a snare drum, the sound waves move those coils back and forth alongside the magnet, which creates an electromagnetic pulse, which creates sort of a signal that then gets transferred into the wire. That's just the way the technology is for these types of microphones. These type of microphones don't require any kind of power whatsoever. You plug in your typical XLR three prong microphone cable, plug it into the preamp or the console or your audio interface, and you just record into it. It's dead simple. So if you're like me coming from the live performance world when I was a teenager, that's all I knew. Plug in the mic and it works. The problem is that's just one type of microphone. There are also two others and we're going to talk about one other main type of microphone today and that is the condenser microphone. A classic example would be the Behringer B2 Pro microphone. I actually reviewed this many years ago. Its little brother, the B1, was the very first studio microphone I ever purchased when I was in high school, and I still have it and actually still use it today. And the B2 Pro is like a little bit more feature, bigger feature set than the B1. Doesn't matter which brand, I'm just talking about the style of microphone. Typically, you see this kind of microphone used in vocal recordings in the studio, or drum overhead recordings in the studio, or acoustic guitar recordings in the studio or piano recordings in the studio. You don't see these very often live, but you see them all the time in the studio. Why is that? It's a different technology inside the microphone to capture sound. Instead of coils going back and forth over a magnet, you have a simple diaphragm inside that just blows back and forth almost effortlessly when you sing, perform, whatever into this microphone. It is so sensitive and it moves back and forth. But for this guy to operate, it actually needs electricity. It actually needs additional power other than what's coming off of the microphone cable. This is where we get into phantom power. And it's called phantom because, yes, it's like a ghost. It just shows up out of nowhere. I don't know. But when you ever have a studio microphone like this that is a condenser style microphone, if you plug it in, turn up the preamp gain, you're not gonna get any signal. It's gonna be like it's muted until you hit that 48V, 48, 48 volts of phantom power button, and then power comes off of the microphone preamp or off of the interface, up the cable, into the microphone, and it activates and charges the capsule inside so it can now be used. In short, you need phantom power if you're gonna use a condenser microphone, and you probably are gonna use a condenser microphone in your studio. In fact, it's the type of microphone I recommend if you could only pick one microphone, I would get a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's great for vocals, it's great for acoustic guitars, it's great for drum overheads or the whole drum kit. It's great for almost anything. If you can only get two microphones, then I would also pick up a dynamic because these are great for snare drums, guitar amps, vocals as well. They're two very different styles of capturing audio and they do it very well in different ways and different applications. But this guy, the dynamics can just plug right in and go. But these type of microphones, the condensers need phantom power. The good news is 
every interface, just about every interface and every budget, even the ultra budget interfaces at 50 to $100 come with phantom power as a button you can click on either physically or in a piece of software that comes with your interface so you're not out of luck. It's a simple, normal thing to have to turn on and off for condenser microphones, but that is what it is. It's just power to your mic, and that's why you need it if you want your mic to work. Now, if you're brand new to recording and you're asking, well, what microphone should I get? Should I get the Behringer or should I get the Shure SM57? Or I don't even know what kind of interface I need. If you're kind of asking those questions, you're in the right place. I've put together my personal recommendations for studio gear in my home studio gear guide. This breaks down my favorite microphones, audio interfaces, software, speakers, headphones, you name it, including some packages that I created. If I were gonna make a studio, at this price point, I would get this, this, and this. At this price point, I would get this, this, and this. And of the microphones and the audio interfaces and the software and all those things, I recommend different options at different price points so it will fit any budget. And in case you're wondering, I don't have any affiliate links in this guide. I don't have any partnership with any of these companies. I did this for a reason so that I can genuinely recommend them to you without any bias. And you can decide for yourself. I have links to where you can buy them on Sweetwater, but they're not affiliate links. I don't make a cut of any of these things. I don't get paid to promote them. You can buy them wherever you want or buy something else. But if you're new and you don't know what to get, these are all pieces of gear that I either presently own have owned and used, or I really like the company and trust what they make and know the people, and so I can make those recommendations. So at the very least, this guide will help you sift through the thousands and thousands of options of microphones and gear and all that kind of stuff and go to some tried and true solid options at pretty much any price point. You can get that guide for free. Click the link below this video or just go to studiogearguide.com and download it there, it's absolutely free. Hopefully you find it helpful as a resource. And I update this every year with fresh changes or fresh links if something goes out of date. Hope you enjoy. As always, thanks for subscribing to the channel, liking the video, it means a ton. And I'll see you on another video real soon.